Microphone check. Microphone check, one, two. Check. Checking for song. Microphone check, one, two.
Praise the Lord. Good evening, family, friends, well-wishers, neighbors, all who have come to, as our program would state, to celebrate the life and in thanksgiving for the life of Natasha Harding. Can I ask you to stand, please, as we begin? John chapter 11 and verse 25, 26 reads, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Can I ask for the entrance hymn to be played, please. Oh. Okay. Oh. All right, all right. Okay. All right. I want to invite Mr. Castillo to open us in prayer. Father and God, we look to you today with a thankful heart, knowing, O oh God, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And we are grateful that you have called Natasha before her exit of this land called Earth. But as we gather here today, we ask for your comfort to everyone that is here, family, the husband, the child, and to everyone that has been touched by the passing of this dear daughter of yours. We pray, O oh God, that you will have your way in the midst of this service. May your words go forth and comfort every broken heart, lift up every downtrodden spirit, Today I pray in a special way for your spirit to move. Move in the hearts and lives of your people. Natasha has made her calling an election show. May we who are on this planet still prepare ourselves and be ready. Speak to your servant, O oh God, and may your word reach the hearts and the spirit of every individual and draw them nearer and closer to you. Your word promised that you will comfort us. You will never leave us nor forsake us. And you will be with us always. Have your way today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seat. We have a little issue that we will have to make an adjustment to because of the live stream music can't be played and you would see on your program there are songs but because of that factor music will not be played at this time we have the eulogy to be read by Navin Ramroop so I'm going to invite Mr. Navin Ramroop to come and give the eulogy. Good evening, everyone. To everything, there is a season, a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, 
a time to keep and a time to cast away. We are gathered here today to memorialize the life of, of, of our beloved Natasha Harding so that together we may acknowledge and share both our joy in the gift that her life was to us and the pain that her passing brings. In sharing the joy and the pain together today, may we lessen the pain and remember more clearly the joy. This individual has touched many lives and she was known to some as a dedicated mother, a diligent teacher, a loving sister, a caring aunt, and much more. Natasha Harding was only 41 years old when she passed away unexpectedly on Thursday, the 7th of January, 2021, at her residence in Palm Drive, Kingdom Village, Arima. It's very hard to say goodbye and unfortunate that we had to meet under these circumstances. We wish that Natasha had more time and perhaps that during the time that she had, we could have spent more of it together with her. While we know that she's at peace and that her struggles are at an end, there is pain and sadness. But even though she's gone, she has left the legacy of her, of her, of her love, kindness, and perseverance. The way she touched our lives will remain and I ask you to keep those memories alive by sharing them with me and with one another. From an early age in her childhood, Natasha proved that she would achieve any goal that she decided to pursue as well as show her commitment to working hard. She used to assist her father on the farm and also take care of her siblings since she was the eldest child in the family. Hence the reason why she shown us her ex excellent culinary skills in the kitchen, judging from the many photos she posted on Facebook. Later on, Tasha pursued a course in geriatric nursing, then joined the Red Cross and afterwards obtained a degree in education. She was employed as a teacher at a private school and then moved on to work at the Arima Hindu School and was lastly transferred to the Lahakata South Government Primary School as a permanent teacher there. But even with all these achievements in her life, her greatest treasures was family. First and foremost, she loved her daughter, Megan more than anything else in this world. And one thing we know for sure is that, Natasha's, is that Natasha would move heaven and earth for her child, and by extension, anyone who needed her assistance. She was very charitable and, generous, and a generous person. One of my fondest memories of her was her tendency to playfully exaggerate. She once told me that she had an elephant walking in her ear. I remember her father standing and looking at her confused and then asked her how an elephant could fit in her ear. It was an ant. <laughs> she had a great sense of humor and often told stories of her many experiences, whether it was humorous or not. She was lovingly called nicknames by her family like Mother Hen and Bumpy. Her colleagues referred to her as Sol which meant Natasha was always involved in any and everything. Well, if there's one thing I can say about her is that she was very brave and outspoken. But with deep sadness today, this wonderful person has suddenly departed from us in this world and has begun a journey in the next. She will be missed dearly by everyone. All we have are the wonderful memories of her which will live on in our hearts. And we ask that everyone keep Megan in their prayers. Before I close, on behalf of myself and the rest of the family, I would like to thank you all for coming and supporting us here today, which shows just how loved Tasha, Natasha was and how much she will be missed. May Almighty God bless you all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now remember, it's a celebration and thanksgiving amen so you can you can still smile you can still clap encourage somebody if they come to say something amen praise the lord hallelujah i'm a kind of noisy guy so please i hope i don't make you uncomfortable um i'm asking if there is anybody who can sing i mean really sing because I don't think it will be um, 
a real nice send-off without us doing at least one or two songs. Yes? Amen. So we will manage the program at some point where we have the, the hymn. There is a place for the hymn. If there is anybody that can sing, know the song, I would, I would like you to, to indicate to me so that we can do that. I don't think it will be a good thing. We don't have any song at all. So that was the eulogy. At this time, we want to open the floor for expressions. And, and please, let us keep in mind that we have an hour. Yes? So anyone wishing at this time to give an expression, to say something, to share a cherished memory about Natasha, you can do so at this time. So you can indicate, and of course we must um, observe the social distancing. So as you come, please, you can proceed to do that now. Beautiful. So I think you can encourage this brave woman that will lead the way. Just need someone to start and then it will flow. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. On behalf of myself, my son and our family, the Johns, we would like to send sincere condolences to Miss Harding's family her husband and her daughter by extension. Um, Miss Harding and I would have met about two years ago, um, two close to three years ago when my last daughter, Sakani, would have started Lohokita South Government. But it was just a brief hi, good morning, whatever the case may be. When we truly got to know each other, it was last year, September, when my son, Sakani, got placed into her class. And with the new online learning and everything, I was so frustrated. And then all of a sudden, Sakiri could not have write his letters and form it the way Miss Harding wanted it to be done. So I called her, I said, Miss Harding, listen, I see, you see today, I'm going to put some lashes on Sakiri. I said, because he's not doing what you want him to do. She said, mommy, listen, 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 listen. She said, let me call you back. And she did. She said, Marilyn, where are you? I said, next to Sakiri. She said, move away. I said, okay. She said, go into your bedroom. She said, listen, what I want you to do for me today. I want you to take some time to you. She said, I want you to love upon you today. She said, leave Sakiri. Leave the work. She said, you know what? Paint your toes. Do a facial. Go to the mall. Eat some chocolate, you know. She said, don't worry. We will get through this online thing together. And that was just like about for five months. And she has made it a great, great impact on my life and by extension the life of my son. Because she would have called once a week, two, three times, whenever video call, just to say, hi, Sakari, how are you doing? You know, how is work? Do you understand what you have to do? She was a sweet individual for the short time that I have known her. So... I'm just going to continue to lift you guys up in prayer and continue to have that beautiful memory of her life. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Is there another that feel inspired to come and say something, make an expression? Amen. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, today, I must say that um, I'm saddened by Tasha's death. I met Tasha through my in-laws, which is the Martinez. And um, Tasha and Megan has always been everywhere with the Martinez. So she always 
there. We have church camp, Tasha goes. We have clean up in church, decoration, we call Tasha. And you know, um, she is going to be so missed. Like I'm watching the decorations in church last night and I'm seeing Tasha did those flowers. And you know, I just want to say today to her family that you keep her legacy alive for Megan because Megan was her will. And um, may she rest in peace. Amen. Who is next? Amen. Come on, come on, somebody. Now, I, I'm a preacher, eh? so I, I, I could talk. But I'm giving you guys an opportunity. Hi, good afternoon. I am Marvin's mother. I've known Sasha for a little over five years. And when we, when we got to know Tasha, it was like another child to me. I'm a mother of nine children, and Tasha came like the tent. And when she came down, like for a weekend or something, it was like everything to eat, food, everything. Mom, mom, sometimes when I'm sick, I have to go to the hospital, she will call mom. She used to call me Miss Joan. Miss Joan, are you OK? Please rest yourself. Please do this, do that. And Tasha was just like anything, Megan, call your granny, call your granny, let your granny, you know, and any hour she will call. And, you know, we were expecting Tasha to move down to Labre for this year, and things were just going in place. And when I got the news, I was just like, oh, no, we have to start all over again. I couldn't believe when I got the news, because when Marvin told me Bobby Tasha going to the hospital, I was like, why she don't go to the hospital? Because she was like, if I am ill, she'll say, Miss Joan, please go to the doctor. Please go to the doctor. And she will say the day before he said, Tasha, go to the hospital. And she not going to the hospital. And the morning when she passed away, it was like the whole family was like it. It wasn't, it wasn't good with the family. All the grandchildren, everybody for her, she had a name for each one of the nieces. So you know it had one she will call Bone, she will call this one. She had a name for everyone. And it is a very sad, you know, it was so sad to see Megan. I know, and I, the first thing when I got the news too, and it was like, oh my God, Megan, poor Maggie. It was like, everything with Tasha is Megan, and everything with Megan is Tasha. So Lord Father, I ask you all to pray for them, give them the strength, give them having all the strength and the courage, you know that, because I know Megan really don't know what is going on because like she will come the night she died, she came down the Thursday and it's like well, I tried to take a rest and when I look, I just open my eyes and I look at the side of bed, Megan was standing there. I say, Megan, what are you doing up? It's twelve thirty. Granny, I can't sleep. Can I speak to my mommy, please? <laughs> and I said, When your daddy wake up in the morning, he will tell you and you know she spent the first two days with us and it's like every minute. Where is my mommy? My mommy's in Mount Hope Hospital. She's coming back dressed now. Then again, she will ask them, who will teach the children that my mommy used to teach? You know, since, and she'll ask the aunt, auntie, if a teacher die and she has a class with kids, who will take care of the children? These are the questions she keep asking us. You know, so it's very, very sad. So I ask you all to pray, keep Megan and Marvin in my in prayer, and please, I hope they'll be strong enough to keep on. I'll, I'm trying my best to stand up with him and her, so thank you all for coming, and God bless you all. Amen. Does that seem like the Tasha that you know? Huh? Very caring and loving, jovial individual. Hallelujah. At this time, we have a scripture reading. So I'm going to invite Mr. Marvin Morgan to come and read Psalm 23. Yeah, no problem. 
good afternoon all who are gathered here this afternoon. Uh, Psalm 23, Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Ye, do I walk through the valley, through the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparedest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you. That's the word of the Lord. Amen. We can find comfort in the Lord. We can find comfort even in this time of grief and sorrow. The Lord is always present and is able to give us strength and comfort in this time. I'm trying to stick with the program. So this time I want to just share a thought from the scripture, from God's word. I want to share a thought from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. And hear what it says. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment. With every secret thing. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now I'm sure that we will all be aware that the authorship of the book of Ecclesiastes has been taken note that it is from King Solomon. Very wise man. So the authorship is attributed to King Solomon. And in chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 he says that he sets out to search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under the heaven. And in chapter 12, verse 13 and 14, he makes this de declaration after much searching and experimentation. And he comes up with the conclusion, the duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. The purpose of man. God made man with a purpose. There is a purpose for your life. There is a purpose for my life. There is purpose. God created man with purpose. One, to have dominion over his creation and Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 says and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so God made man and gave man the responsibility to have dominion over his creation the other thing is that God made man to have fellowship with him. To have fellowship with him. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8 says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. So God will come and meet with Adam and Eve and have 
fellowship, have communion. God wants to have relationship with man. So God made man to have relationship with him. The other thing is that God created man to worship him. To worship him. John chapter 4 verse 23 and verse 24 says, But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now Solomon set out to acquire wisdom, and he experimented. Solomon had women, he had vineyards, wine, he had wealth, properties, and fine clothes. Yet he described them as vanity. If you read Ecclesiastes, many times Solomon will say, all is vanity. All is vanity. Then he points to the duty of man. And maybe like him, we may look for fulfillment in all that was mentioned above. We are consumed concerned and we are consumed with things sometimes we try to find happiness in career and education and clothes and houses and the acquisition of things but solomon reminds us that all is vanity and i'm saying this not to be malicious but when we have the viewing and you come to look at Natasha, you wouldn't see a house, you wouldn't see a car, you wouldn't see possessions packed up in the coffin. Because all those things that we put so much emphasis on, when our time comes, it stays right here. The things that we fight to attain, when we go, Job tells us, we come into this world naked, and surely we will go naked. So it brings into our minds what we value and what we put importance on. Things will fade away. Things does not truly satisfy because you see god made man with a purpose with a purpose and i would have talked with natasha personally and she was interested in that pursuit in that area of her life yes we may know of all the wonderful meals that she would have cooked and how much she loved her daughter and all those things very commendable and, and and she was right in that but understanding that there is a higher purpose there is a higher purpose there is a greater purpose so man duty solomon declares is to keep god's commandment and this implies not just knowing them but doing them. Not just knowing. Not knowing about God, but knowing God. Not knowing what his commandment says, but doing them. As a matter of fact, we are instructed that we should not be just hearers of the word, but we must be doers of the word. We must practice the word. We must live the word. We must allow God's word to be the guide in our life second timothy verse 3 and verse 16 chapter 3 and verse 16 says all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness hallelujah god word has been set out 
to give man direction and to govern our life. It does not matter what society, philosophers, or so-called wise men say. It is nothing to a man whether he may be rich or poor. But this is the main matter. It is all in all to a man to fear God and do as he bids him. That's what is important. To fear God and to keep his commandments. To fear God and to live according to his commandments. The idea of fearing God is not being afraid of God, but reverencing God. Having a respect for God as the creator. Hallelujah. As the one who sustains our life. As the one who keeps us and protects us and provides for us. As the one who has put us on this earth with a plan, with a purpose for our life. It's easy to say, I fear God. But fearing God must lead us to obey his commandments. If the police, let me use the COVID as an illustration. We have laws in this time that govern our interaction and, 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 and so on. And if we are not following the instructions, we are flouting the laws. It is not saying to us that we respect. Hello? That we respect the authorities and the laws that they have put in place. So all these Zessa parties and all these doings on the beach and all the different things that we hear of, that is not showing respect. And if God, who has created us, has set in his word laws that should govern the life of man, it is not just about knowing them, it's about living according to them because you reverence God because you have a respect for God if as a parent you put an instruction to your child and your child is disobedient the first thing you say you don't have respect for me hello amen yet we talk about God we talk about his principle we talk about his laws but we are not allowing it to govern our life we are not living according to the principles of God's word. So we need to take note of that. Why should man fear God and keep his commandments? Because a powerful in his inducement is made. The consequences of us not responding to fearing God and keeping his commandment is outlined. There is a consequence. Hello? If you break the law, if you don't have on your face mask, if you don't social distance, there is a consequence. Hello? Yes? You will pay a fine. In the same way, God has set his principles, his laws, and if we break his laws, there is a consequence. There is a consequence. There is a judgment to come. Hello? Solomon says so. He said we shall give account for every secret thing. Hello? When we dead, we are not done, you know. Hear what Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 says. And as it is appointed unto man once to die. But after this, the judgment. Hello? We will give an account for the life that we lived on this earth. We will give an account for how we lived. And whether we obeyed the principles and the laws of God. We will give an account. God himself will judge. 
Hallelujah. God is the one that will judge. What is the duty of man? To fear God and to keep his commandment. And God shall bring everything into judgment. He is the one that will judge. Because he's the righteous judge. He is not a judge that you could bribe. Hello? You could give him something on the side to overlook. He's a righteous judge. And let me tell you something about judgment. Judgment, God's judgment, does not give us what we don't deserve. God's judgment gives us what we deserve. So sometimes you will hear people say, ah, God is such a loving God. God will not put us in hell. God don't put anybody in hell. If we do not follow his commandment, there is a consequence. I see sometimes people break the law and when police charge them, go and hold. Why don't you go and look for the criminal? You, you are a criminal at that time because you break the law. Hello? There is a judgment to come. And God himself will judge. Not only because he has the right to judge, because he is perfectly fit for it. Infinitely wise and just. God knows every secret thing. He sees everything. There is nothing that escapes his eyes. Every work will then be brought into judgment. Everything that we do will be inquired into. It will be a day to bring to remembrance everything done in the body. The great thing to be then judged of every work is whether it be good or evil. And God will determine that. And that is according to God's word and his eyes. God determine what is right. God determine what is just. Hello. What is the duty of man? To serve God and to keep his commandments. We get caught up and we pursue all sorts of things in life. And, and, and those things has its place and its value. But let us not live life without God. Let us not live life minus God. It's a dangerous thing to do. In considering that we shall be judged and the strictness of that judgment, we should be concerned about our walk with God, that we may give our account with joy. And I just want to read a scripture in closing. From Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Verse 18. It gives a very real account. The account is about a man that bought a field. And I just want to read from verse 18. I'm not go going to take up time with all the rest. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my bands and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou was much goods laid up for many years. Take thy knees, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. You know, we plan to come here and we plan to go home. Are we sure we will reach home? We lay down at night and we say, I'll see you tomorrow. 
Are we sure we will see tomorrow? Did any of us expect to be here saying goodbye to Natasha? And when we consider the reality of our mortality, the reality that we have no control, <coughs> excuse me, whether we wake up from sleep or how long we will live, it will do us well. And I want to encourage all of us standing, all of us here today, understand that we have a duty. What is the duty of man? To serve God and to keep his commandments. Don't talk about the commandments. Don't open a Bible and put it in your car and in your bedroom. That is not doing anything there for you. You've got to live it. Hallelujah. What God's word says, we must apply it to our life. Because remember, after death, there is a judgment. And we will all give an account for the life that we live. Amen? John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There is a way to acquire everlasting life. It's by accepting Jesus the Christ who came and died on the cross of Calvary, shed his blood, paid the price, the ransom, hallelujah, for humanity. And if we put our trust in him, if we accept him as our Lord and Savior and Master, we can inherit eternal life. And I want to encourage you today if you have not done that to do so and that's just the first step then we must find ourselves in a church that preaches the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and then we must live according to the principles of God's word but the first step begin with accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and maybe you're here today and you're saying, you know what? I want to make sure that my life is in a right place. That if death comes suddenly, I can be assured eternal life. So I want you to bow your heart. And I'm going to say a prayer. And if you are in such a place to make a decision like that, just repeat that prayer with me. And you can always talk to me after. Dear God, I stand before you today. And I acknowledge my need for salvation. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. And God, I accept your son Jesus Christ's sacrifice as the payment for my sin. So I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from my sins. And be my Lord. And be my master. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer genuinely. Then you are saved. And you are on your way. To eternal life. But remember there are steps that must go along with it. Amen. Is there anybody willing to take the challenge to help us with the, the hymn? It's when we all get to heaven. Oh, yes, we have two wonderful ladies that will sing. We have 15 minutes, so we go in good for the time. Good afternoon to everyone. It's good afternoon, everyone. It's a song on your program. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us 
a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. And while we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds may overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. For when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. For when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. sing and shout the victory. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Thank you so much, amen. That made such a difference. Praise the Lord. But this time on the program, we have a prayer of comfort. And I want to ask all the family members if they can just stand and together, social distance, of course, that we can pray for the members of the family that in this time and the coming days and weeks and so on, that God, by his spirit, will give strength and give comfort. Father, we thank you for who you are. Indeed, you are the God of comfort. You are God that is able to give strength in the inner man. And Father, this time, Lord, we lift up every member of the family, every member of Natasha family, and God, we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ, God, that you will rest your hand upon them. And Father, you will give comfort and you will give strength. God, you will cause them, O oh God, as they look to you, to be empowered, Father, with the capacity, Lord, to cope with the loss. O oh God, we pray for Megan in the name of Jesus, that you will, O oh God, cover, comfort, keep, O oh God, and watch over her. Father, I pray, O oh God, in this time of grieving, Father, that by your spirit, you will cause them, O oh God, to so depend upon you. And Father, you will not fail because you're a God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can think or ask. So Father, we pray your blessing upon every family member. Father, we pray your grace. Give grace for your grace is sufficient. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You may have your seats. We have a final commendation which will be done virtually. So you can look to the screen. And it's a virtual tribute by the students of the La Hoqueta South Government Primary School.
kids into whatever task she volunteered for. This one is Byron, just here in your house. And Miss Natasha, you have left us with a boy that cannot be filled. D is for going to school list. You will not be forgotten. We love you, Miss Harden. Thank you for the time you spent with us. view the body, but I need to do the committal. For as much as it has, as it has pleased God to take unto himself the soul of our departed Natasha Harding. Body to this place prepared for it, that ashes may return to ashes, dust to dust and the imperishable spirit, refined as by fire, may be forever with the Lord. So we commit her body to its kindred spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we will allow for the viewing before the body. But let us try and do it in an orderly way, please. Amen. Let's not gather and so on. So you can come from the side and look at it. We have six minutes, so you can proceed. Um, Yes, allow 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 Megan and D to do their say their goodbye.
O oh, death, where is thy sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. May the peace of God and the comfort of the Holy Spirit rest upon all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and for coming and supporting the family. And do have a good evening.